what really took us over the over the edge was uh, our matches with Triple X, and that that I know people remember because um, that started you know early on in the Nashville days and just continued on into um, our tapings in Orlando. So uh, our matches with them, I mean, I know we had like a best of five series. You know, we've had two cage matches with them, so it was. I think that really uh, put us over the top. Well, we have to talk about Turning Point 2004. Like <laughs> the crazy thing is, I think a lot of people don't remember who won that match, but they remember you taking the crazy walk the cage Hurricane Rana from Elix Skipper. Like that's insane to watch back. It really is, and it's amazing. People still talk about that to this day. Um, yeah, that was our second cage match, so a lot of people don't even remember the first one. Um, and you know, we were out there to uh, you know our, our first cage match had got a lot of attention uh, but then when we were talking about doing the second one um you know we of course we want to go out and we want to top the first one which is almost you know that'd be incredible if we could do that and uh yeah elix had this idea and i thought it was completely absurd um i was like there's no way now what a lot of people don't remember is elix um part of his arsenal was to walk the top rope and do a hurricane rana off from that Right. Um, I don't but think on the ropes yeah, on the ropes. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it wasn't a complete out, out of the blue uh, idea. Um, he had done, he'd done that in his matches uh, previously. And so when he brought that up, I was like, man, that takes it to a whole different level. I mean, that's, that's dangerous. And, and to be honest with you, um, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but I, I told him no um, for, for most of the, it wasn't talked about till that day. And uh, most of the day I was telling him, no, I was like, there's no way. I said, you know, I don't know if I want to take something like that. And it's certainly dangerous for him. And um, <clears throat> it came to be, I did, it couldn't have been more than a few hours before the, before the event. And uh, he came and, and tried it one more time. And I, I looked at him and I said, can you really do this? And I think what got me was his confidence. He said, yes, I can do this. And when I saw that he had no nothing wavering, um, I said, "Okay, let's do it." I mean, you know, we, we you have to you have to take your chances, man. I mean, and, and a lot of a lot of people still think there's a a lot of practice and a lot of um, uh, you know uh, going over everything. You know, there's what you can't. That's a one and done thing. I mean, you don't <laughs> you don't practice that. Um, so you never walked through that move before. No, no. Oh, wow. uh, I'm trying to think if they even had the cage out that day. I mean, we may not have walked through anything you know we were in there with professionals and uh we were very confident in our ability but definitely nothing with that um so yeah i mean i told him i said okay let's do it and uh and and it just uh, it was kind of a switch we just we had our attitude um towards the, we're, we're going to do it and we're going to make it and um and i can remember if you know anybody that looks back at that um, they see he, he's kind of stumbling to get up there uh, at first. He was uh, to get his footing. And I'm over the, and, uh, on the other side with uh, Christopher Daniels. And I noticed he was taking a while. And already I'm looking at Chris. I was like, what's plan B? Because he ain't going to make it. And right about that time, out of the corner of my eye, I looked over and he was already on me. So he, uh, I mean, you, you saw once he got his footing, he was gone, man. And uh, next thing you know, his legs around my head and here we go. So, uh Yeah. Uh, and, and he gets props for that, and I'm glad he does. But a lot of people always forget who was the one that actually took that bump. So, <laughs> and you took it like perfectly too. Yeah, it couldn't have been any better, and I'm very fortunate with that because that's a, that's a long way down. It's a long landing. And what a lot of people don't remember is when that clip is over. If you watch the full match, you're laying there. Then Christopher Daniels drops an elbow on you like 20 seconds later. Yeah, I uh, I think I did something to my ribs. When I landed, um, like you said, it was a it was a perfect landing. I couldn't have couldn't have been any better. But I was kind of you know feeling around my ribs because I I couldn't breathe. And before I knew it, yeah, I'm looking up and I'm like, oh my god, Chris Daniels is coming. And uh, yeah, he, he did. He, I didn't have any time to really recover. I don't know what the hell I was I was thinking, but um, yeah, double whammy on that. Did you have any idea when you were planning out the match that that would be the moment that not only people would talk about with that match, but then people would talk about from that pay-per-view and then that year. And then now just in general, that's a TNA highlight forever. Yeah, no, I never knew that. Um, I, I guess I never thought about it. You know, it, 
if it's executed great, awesome. That's a high spot of the match. Um, but I never thought that it would get over to that, uh, to that effect. And, um, yeah, I'd never imagined uh, 20 years later, it'd still be, you know, still be talked about, but, um, well, I guess, yeah, know, very, very was, cool. The bar was set really high. Like the X division was you know, pulling all kinds of stuff out. It was unbelievable. The fact that somehow you guys topped that is crazy. And Elix mostly wrestled in the X division. So it, it, that was another part of what I mentioned earlier is just developing or, um, um, yeah, developing other styles, um, uh, being able to adapt to the other styles. You know, Elix, that's a that's probably you would consider an X division move. Well, that's that's his that's his arsenal. That's what he's good at. So we have to be able to adapt to that. So if they can pull off moves like that, I'll be there to to catch you or to to land or you know whatever the case may be. But I I'm I'm very glad that uh, Elix and I communicated about that and, and we were able to get it in there because uh, I'd say yeah, people still. One other thing that made that look so good is that camera angle was perfect because it was right behind Elix. You felt like he did and you did that you guys were up really, really high. And that camera following him along, I think made it so perfect. That was amazing. Um, and that's something we didn't think about. You know, that was, I don't know if uh, any other companies were using that. We called it the crane cam. And uh, yeah, and it's literally like a big, it's a, it's a jib, right? It's a big, uh, it's on a giant arm. Yeah, and uh, usually when you see guys perform something at the top of a cage, you're looking up at them, and you're like, "Oh man, that must be must be high up there." Well, this gave you an angle of being up there and seeing. Yeah. Hell yeah, it's high. That's <laughs> it's a lot higher than you think. Um, so yeah, that was a. I'm glad you brought that up. That was an awesome camera angle. 